Greetings and welcome to a new video. We have now another topic in place here. We have the discrete time systems and we will discuss the stability of these systems. Now in this case, we will discuss the jury stability test and this will be your example number one. And we will work out as we did in the previous videos, the calculations step by step nicely and also verify these in MATLAB simulations. So let's look at the problem. We have the following close to discrete time system given. You can see the GZ, it is in Z domain, so it is in discrete time system. We have the numerator and over the denominator D. This is the transfer function of this system, which is converted from the, let's say, the S domain to the Z domain by Z transform. Now we can see there's a third order system, and we have one zero and a third order polynomial and we would like to know if this system is stable. So how do we do that? We will use the jury's stability test for that. So the solution is first going through the polynomial of this denominator. The, in general, the polynomial of a third order system is given by this expression. You can see the a3 times z cubed plus a2 times z squared plus a1 times z to the power of one, going actually in the same fashion and then plus a0 times a z to the power 0 is 0. Now the correct equation for this system is given by the denominator and that of course equated to 0. Now you can now check the coefficients so you just look at the like terms so the coefficient of the z cubed is a3 which is 1. The coefficient of the z squared is a2 which is then minus 1.6 in a similar form for the z to the power 1, which is 1.2, and for the a0, which is minus 0.4. This is handy to write it down in a separate form, in this kind of form as a list, so you can use it later, because we need these information, we need these values for the further steps. The first step is check the first condition in the jury test. What is the first condition, or what are the first conditions? The first condition uh, first actual constraint in this set is the absolute value of the a0 coefficient must be less than the an, which is the highest uh, index number. Now in this case we have n3, which is a third order system, so the n is equal to 3. So absolute value of a0 must be smaller than, I must say smaller than a3. So it means the absolute value of minus 0.4 must be smaller than 1, which is true. So that first statement is correct. Now the second statement, the second condition, says that the denominator, so the correct equation evaluated at z equals 1, must be larger than 0. Okay, let's check that. What we do is substitute in here for the z 1. So you get 1 cubed minus 1.6, 1 squared, etc. Now, if you do the math, you will get 0.2. That is indeed larger than 0, so we also meet this condition. That's nice. So we have the first two conditions done. The final one, the third one, we have the minus 1 quantity to the power n, which is then, of course, the order, times d, which is the correct equation, evaluated at z equal minus 1. One. And that product must be larger than zero. So again, another larger than zero condition. Now let's then write down everything, substitute for this d, for the z equal to minus one, and also minus one to the power three, of course, in the parentheses. So you will, you will get minus one times, minus one times, minus one, effectively minus one. Now if you work this out, you will get 4.2, again, larger than zero. And this is the this uh, the correct equation evaluated minus one so again larger than zero that means we have now these set of conditions all met that's nice in order to go to the step two for the jury stability test you really need to check this if one of this is failing you don't have to continue then you can say your system is unstable okay that's fine so we have now met or uh, process the first step. The second step is setting up the jury table. So we have now the jury table here. So why do I have here now this table? Let's first look at the condition or the formula 
to make these rows and also how much constraint we need to check. Now for an end ordered system, so in general we have these two formulas. So we have to read required in the jury table 2n minus 3 rows and 1n plus 1 constraint. So 2n 2 times n minus 3 rows means 2 times 3 because n is 3 in our case. That means 6 minus 3 again 3. So we get 3 rows. That is indeed the case. So we need these three rows. I will explain this shortly. What does it mean? And we have three plus one, four constraints. So we need to check four constraints. We already checked three, so we need to again, and we need to still check the fourth one, which is the final one. We will be done in the final step. So what is this table actually saying? So what you see is the z to power zero up to z to the power three. So similar to let, let's say there's root Herbert stability criterion. So you're going from the lowest to the highest order. And then you place also the indexes associated with that, uh, with that part. So you will get A0 up to A3. In the reverse fashion, you place it in the second row, the coefficients. And then the B0, B1, and B2 will be calculated to evaluate the fourth condition or the constraint. So let's fill in what we have. So up to for A0 up to A3 and then in reverse fashion you see the results here again these three are still open and we will need to calculate that to check the fourth condition now first do the B0 you see the formula here for calculating B0 you see the determinant of a matrix which is formed by these four elements what it's saying is actually this following the B0 will be equal to the the term of a matrix which is formed by this column and the last column and b1 which will be seen later is formed by is, is a matrix which will be formed by again the same first column but now you will go one step left which is then this column so two columns again the left column is still the same but the right column will change for b2 it will be again a0 a3 but now you go again one step left and it will be A1 and A2. So this is really the, uh, let's say, the procedure for setting up this determinant for the matrix. So if I now substitute the values for A0, A3, and of course again A0, A0 here, A0 here, you will get this. So how do you work out on the determinant? For those of you who might be forget, uh, have not uh, get that information, Determinant is really easy to calculate for a two by two matrices. So you will actually take this number. So this is minus 0 0.4 times this. So these two values will be multiplied minus the multiplication of these two values. So if you work it out, it is in this form. So minus 0 0.4 times minus 0 0.4 minus the one times one, which is minus 0 0.84. And we will use this information later. Now B1, in a similar form, I already said that you keep this left column, but you will now go one step to the left. Now you have your different matrix. Now you will also take the determinant again in a similar form, so you fill in the minus 1.6 and 1.2. Now you will have this expression, so again this times this, so minus 0 0.4 times 1.2 minus, now you need to be very careful, so that's actually the reason why I have this in the parentheses, and I have this result. Now, in a similar form for B2, again, the left column stays the same. Now we have A1 and A2. And if you now substitute everything in here, you will now have this, and you will now get the following result with these values. And if you now work it out, you will get minus 0 0.56. Now, every B1 coefficient for this row. Now, what is now what we need, need to do for the final step? So let's first fill in the table so this these three are the values we require but the final step says actually the following the step three is the check the last condition or conditions depending on of course how much you have depending also again on the order so if you now look at it we need a fourth constraint or fourth condition which is due to that third order system so we have three point plus one fourth condition so we already checked three so we only need one uh, condition to check which is then the absolute value of b0 must be larger than the absolute value of b2 so actually b1 is not required so that is now the final 
checked for the jury test. So we know B0 absolute value of that is minus or the 0 point, minus 0 0.84 will then give you a plus value of that one. It is indeed larger than the minus 0 0.56 as an absolute value. And that is, then the fourth condition is also met. So we need four conditions and the system is, as a conclusion, stable. So we have actually answered the question. Now let's also check this in the simulations. So the simulation results will be now given. We start with the MATLAB code and also the screen we get one, once we run this uh, script. So if you run this script, first let me explain what's happening here. The Z is equal to transfer function of the Z, which will be then defining in the... Okay, now let's bring up first the MATLAB script I have developed here. We have now defined a discrete time system or discrete time variable actually, the Z by this command. And this is the transfer function for this example. We can see again a third order polynomial for our denominator and also the numerator. Now using step G and also grid on for having a grid, but step G, you can now generate a unit step response for the G. And by using this command poll G, you can determine the poles and also give you the, of course, the information if the poles are in the unit circle, which will then be stable or not. So if you run this, you will get the following output. So the script is then this, it has this name. You can see the G is then given by this expression, which is in a sort of the special form zero pole game model. You can then see the first pole here and also the two complex conjugate complex pole pairs here. And you can also see the result here for the poles and they are all on inside the unit circle. So you can already can conclude by looking at the output of this script, all poles are inside the unit circle. We don't look at the zeros because these don't determine the stability. Okay, you can also check the unit step response in MATLAB, again using the step uh, parenthesis G command. You can see this overshoot here approximately 22% or 21.7% more accurately. And also the steady state value, which is 0 0.488. We don't really, uh, really um, care about the actual values. What we, do, what we do care is that the overshoot must be less than 100% and also that system must reach a steady state value or constant value. So it doesn't blow up. That means you will have an unstable system. So this again a confirmation in a different form that this system is stable. Now you can also look at the root log plot, a different form, again generated using MATLAB. In a similar form for the S plane, we can also generate root log plot for the Z plane. So again, the imaginary and real axis. This unit circle here is our boundary, so you need to be inside this unit circle to be stable. Now I have already labeled here the three poles here. These are of course the poles we get from the command window. And this is, these are the two poles. So two complex conjugate poles, complex com pole pairs, and one real pole here. And that is really the confirmation from the poles we got from the command window output. So the results are all again here that the system is indeed stable. So we have actually confirmed using three forms and simulation that this system is indeed stable and our calculations are also confirmed by this fashion. So this was all example number one. If you have any questions, comments about this, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.